you're not really a Christian. And there's no really to it. You either are or you aren't. Jesus said the problem really comes from the heart. Out of the heart come all the things in that flesh list. And when your flesh and your heart are in sync and all they want are the things that are in that list, the dissension, the envy, the strife, the drunkenness, the, you know, the, the, the sexual immorality, the sensuality, all the things that just make me happy. My, when my heart and my flesh are, are together on this, well, then it's a, it's a lost cause. I need the battle to ensue. And the battle starts when I get a new heart. As it says in Ezekiel, my heart of stone that's dead to God now becomes a heart of flesh and it's alive to God and it wants what God wants and what God wants is to bear good fruit. So that struggle starts with making sure I got a new heart. And in a group this size, there's got to be people here that do not have that. And I want you to take a good look in the mirror of God's word and say, am I really a Christian? You don't become a Christian by coming to church. You don't become a Christian by walking an aisle, by getting baptized, by praying a prayer. You get saved by genuine repentance. I'm turning from a life of living for myself. I'm saying no more of this. That's what the works of the flesh are. It's all about me. It's now to glorify God. Before it was just to get by, to be happy, to to be satisfied. So real repentance is a turning from that separation from God and then trusting in the work of Christ to take care of all the problems that I can't solve on my own which is I'm not qualified to be with God to start with. I've fallen. I was born in a fallen situation. I was on a bus that was careening off of a cliff and I can only get out of this bus that's headed to the penalty of my own sin if Christ were to solve the problem for me. Real repentance and real faith. And the Bible says that changes our heart. Regeneration. It's a renewed heart. An an internal part of me that changes. It rewires me. But it starts with even having a new heart. Because if all you got is a bad heart and, and, and a fallen flesh, a few words from a sermon may inspire you for half an hour, but it's not going to ever give you any success in being the kind of person that produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. It, it won't work. So I need a new heart. Well, I got a new heart, Pastor Mike. I know I'm a Christian. I put my trust in Christ. I've, I, I've repented. I've, I've seen fruit in my life. Great. Here's the second thing you're going to need. To use the analogy of fruit, John 15 says, your branch, Christ is the vine, and a branch cannot bear fruit if it's apart from the vine. So here's the thing, you need to, and it's repeated over and over again, you need to abide, you need to remain. This Greek word, just you need to make sure you stick with Christ. Now in a world where everything's wanting to pull you away from the biblical God and the Christ that saves us, you know you've got to work hard to stay close to God. Now, I know that's an analogy, just like the whole branch and the vine is an analogy, but think about this for a second. You have to decide to, as it says in James, you have to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You have to, as a Christian, recognize all the forces pulling you away. Passivity is going to mean you drift away from God. So you need a new heart. You need to abide. 